welcome to the online worship service for the First Presbyterian Church of Sag Harbor, known as Old Whalers Church, and the Community Presbyterian Church of Springs in East Hampton. We're glad that you're here joining us in worship. If you'd like to join in person, we meet at 11 o'clock at Sag Harbor, and we meet at 9 o'clock in Springs. If it's a nice day at Springs, we'll be meeting outside, so bring your lawn chair and join us outside for worship. This is the day of the Lord. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us now prepare to worship God. Ascribe to God glory and strength. Worship God in holy splendor. The splendor of our Creator meets us. We are filled with awe before our God. The voice of God is powerful and full of majesty. God offers strength and peace to all people. God's voice thunders over the waters. God's strength empowers our response. Holy, holy, holy is the God of hosts. The whole earth is full of God's glory. The universe is God's dwelling place. There is no place from which God is absent. Let us pray. O oh God, you are beyond our wildest imagining. When we speak of you, there are no words to describe your majesty and power. We know you best in Jesus of Nazareth, who shared your love with all he met. He called, uh, he called for our rebirth as your children, cleansed by water and the Spirit. We come together seeking renewal of the vows made at our baptism. We want to be faithful as Christ was faithful. We want to be fruitful in the work that you give us to do. Bless our worship that we may be a blessing to others. Amen. Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The New Testament lesson is from the Gospel of John, chapter 3 verses 1 through 17. Hear now God's word. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, 
for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter the second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said it to you. You must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who has descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have, ever, may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is Trinity Sunday. It's one of the holy days of the year that we mark, but it is a different one than all the rest. It's not like Christmas or Easter or Lent or Advent. No, today is a day we call Trinity Sunday, and it's not something that happened in Jesus' life. No, this is a holiday that marks a doctrine of the church, and that doctrine is called the Trinity, and it is how we know God. We know God as Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We know God as Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. We know God in many ways. So today I'd like us to think about how we know God. What has your experience been of God? Now I could give you a test probably about God, and you could tell me about stories that you know from Scripture. You could tell me that God is love. You could tell me lots of facts about God that you have learned throughout your years. You could talk about God. But today we're not talking about God. We're talking about your experience of God. How do you know God is real in your life? How do you trust that God is present with you always? You hear it over and over again as we worship together. But do you know God in your heart? Do you know God in your experience? How is it that you know God? And if you think about the ways that you know God, you think about God as awesome. We learn that God is awesome as we listen to the prophet Isaiah. Think about the images that Isaiah used to describe his experience of God. That God was, as, was taller than the temple. That his robes filled the temple. They were like yards and yards of silk that filled the temple. And there were seraphs around his head. There were seraphs that flew among him and proclaimed that he was holy and that he was the Lord, and that he was full of power and might. Now, Isaiah had this image in the year that King Uzziah died. This was a major turning point in the life of Israel. Israel had been doing well up until this point. It was stable and doing fine until the king died, and then everything turned into chaos. And in the midst of that chaos, Isaiah proclaimed that God 
was present, that God would still remain with the people even in the midst of change, even in the midst of new chaos. How have we experienced God in the midst of what is chaotic in our world today? Where have we seen that God is present in our world? I haven't seen this sanctuary filled with God's robes like silk filling every space, but I do know that God is present with us as we have had to learn how to do worship in new ways, as we have had to think about what is important and what is not important. How have we experienced God? When I was going through confirmation class, one of the important projects that we had to do was to go and sit by ourselves in some special place that was special for us. So whether that was at the beach or out in the woods or on the back porch of your house, wherever that was, was to go and sit there for a while and think about God and think about God being present and have an experience of God. And I knew that God was with me at that point. Again, I didn't see what Isaiah saw, but I felt that God was present with me. And I knew in my heart that God was real and that God sent his son into the world and that God sent his spirit to be with me and to be with all who would love and accept him. What is your experience of God? Perhaps you were in a hospital room with a loved one and praying for God's presence, for God to be there, for God to know that you were there to experience God's love in that place. Did you experience God? Where else have you experienced God's presence with you, knowing that God was there and alive and real with you? Talk to any youth who've been to Triennium, the Presbyterian Youth Triennium. When you talk to them, they talk about how awesome their experience was, how in the conversations and in the worship services and in their small group meetings and in the Bible studies and all of that, they had an experience of God. It just wasn't learning about God, but it was knowing that God was alive and real in their lives and God was transforming who they were and helping them to grow as Christians. If you talk to a lot of pastors, a lot of pastors will talk about their experience of God being the first time when they were at camp and how important church camps are. For it is there that children in the midst of the nature and in the midst of Bible studies and people talking about God and worship services and all the other fun stuff, they experience the reality of God. God just isn't something in our head, but God is someone that we can experience. And we experience God as the Trinity, as the Father, the Father who loves us, who created us, who called all things good. We know God as son, as brother, as someone who gave his life and showed us how to live, who showed us how to reach out to others, who showed us how to love the unlovable, who showed us how to speak up against the forces of evil, who showed us how to live as God's people. And we know God as Spirit. We know God as Holy Spirit, the Spirit that is with us in these days, 
the spirit that surrounds us and helps us to think about God and experience God and know God. The spirit that guides us in our living. The spirit that helps us to make decisions and decide what we should do and how we should do it. The spirit that helps us to live out our Christian faith. So we know God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We know God in these ways. We also can call God many things, creator, redeemer, sustainer. We know God as we experience God in our lives. And you can just feel God in people that have just begun to know God who've just had an experience of God, who are alive and, and know that God is well with them. And sometimes we haven't had this experience for a long time, but we want to know God with us. And we want to be excited about that again. And we want to share our faith that has gotten us through the difficult times of our life. We want to share the faith that has helped us to live out our lives as Christian. We want to share that faith. Well, Jesus was living and showing the people how to live as God's people. Jesus was healing others. Jesus was preaching. Jesus was teaching. Jesus was reaching out to the lost and forgotten. Jesus was showing how God is present in the world. And Nicodemus saw that. Nicodemus saw what Jesus was doing and Nicodemus wanted to know more. He was a leader of the Jews and so he came at night to talk to Jesus because he wanted that experience of God. He wanted to experience what God's love was like. He didn't just want the facts. He wanted to know, to know within his heart what was happening. And so Jesus told him, Jesus told him that he must be born anew. He must be born again. And Nicodemus thought that was literal and asked questions. And finally, Jesus was talking to him and told him he needed to experience God, that God loved him so much that he gave himself. So Nicodemus learned that it wasn't just head knowledge about God that was important, but it was about God's experience of God. So we who are Presbyterian are really good about learning all about God and learning all about theology and learning all about the facts. Go to any Presbyterian seminary and you'll see books and books and books and books written by theologians and authors about God. But what is important is not our facts about God, but what is important is our experience of God. Has it been a long time since you've been excited about your experience with God? about the day that you believed that God was real in your life. Today is a day to think about God, to set aside some time to experience God's presence with you. Today is the day to remember that God is present with us, guiding us, loving us, teaching us, sharing with us. And so we can proclaim with the seraphs, holy, holy, holy is our God. Almighty is our God. Loving is our God. Today on Trinity Sunday, think about the Trinity and knowing God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Think about knowing God as our Redeemer and our Savior. Think about knowing God as all-powerful. Think about the ways that you've experienced God. 
And where have those experiences been? And what have you been going through? And perhaps in these days ahead, you too can experience God in a new and different way, assured that God is present with you always. Amen. opportunity we have to worship with you, for the opportunity we have to think about our relationship with you and how we experience your love in our lives. We give you thanks, O oh God, for all of the places and times that we have experienced your love in real and tangible ways, when we have known that you are present with us. We give you thanks, O oh God, for those faith experiences in our lives. As we come together as your people, we know that there are many like Nicodemus that are searching, looking for that experience of God, looking for answers about life and what is, what is important, that are looking in all the wrong places. We know that there are people that are called spiritual, but not religious that are called spiritual, but not seeking out religion. And we know, O oh God, that as we gather together as your people, that we learn more about who you are, that we experience you in our worship, that we are challenged to live as your people, that we are encouraged to make differences in our lives so that we can show your love in our community and in our world. Help us, O oh God, to remember that there are people all around us that are seeking answers. And help us to remember that we, we, through our experience, can share some of what we know in order to provide some of those answers. O oh God, as we worship together, we pray for the world where we live. We give you thanks for the gift of creation and all that is in it that is good and beautiful. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the gift of life, for the opportunities we have in our lives to share who we are, to share the gifts and talents and treasures that you have given to us to make a difference in our world. We give you thanks, O oh God, our creator for all that you created. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the gift of your son who showed us how to live. And as we give you thanks for him, we ask, O oh God, that we too reach out into our world in the way that he reached out into our world, sharing with those who are hungry, talking to those who are searching, praying for those who are ill, 
sharing time with those who are forgotten. We give you thanks, O oh God, for your son Jesus who gave us life for us all. We also give you thanks this day for the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit which surrounds us and nurtures us, the Holy Spirit which guides us in our living. And we pray, O oh God, that the Holy Spirit fill our hearts, that we seek to do all we can do to serve you, that we know that we are your people, that we know that you are present with us always. We pray for your Holy Spirit to be present in this place, to provide revival and renewal of this congregation, and help us to reach out with that spirit to the community around us. This day, O oh God, on this Trinity Sunday, we pray and give you thanks for all that is good in the world. And we give you thanks that you are present with us always as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And now, O oh God, we pray to you the prayers of our hearts as we lift them up to you in silence. We pray this prayer and all our prayers through Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today is Trinity Sunday. Therefore, may the love of God and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Amen.